the first question I want to answer is, I think it was maybe in the comments someone asked, why does social anxiety occur? Like, why do I experience social anxiety? So the way I like to talk about this is that your emotional brain, just over here, it experiences a situation as dangerous. And when it does, it kicks in something I call the social anxiety equation. This is a series of beliefs. So they are the belief that one, when you enter the situation, your flaws will be revealed. Two, people will notice your flaws. Three, they will also consider them flaws versus thinking they're cute or something. Four, they will be judgmental about those flaws. Five, this will lead to harsh rejection. And six, the rejection will be intolerable or unbearable. So what happens is you enter a situation or you think about entering a situation and your emotional brain lights up, this string of beliefs kicks in and then your body responds by going straight into threat system. And when you're in threat system, that kicks in all of those protective mechanisms that are designed to keep you safe from that danger. So things like having the high performance standards, uh, like worrying, ruminating, self-focused attention, um, trying, to, trying to escape, trying to protect and hide the flaws, all of those things that kind of make up the experience of social anxiety kick in. What we're trying to do with treatment is we, we want to understand those series of beliefs, but if we can turn those off, if we can disprove those, if we can teach your system that those beliefs are incorrect, then there's no reason for your threat system to kick in. So there's no reason for you to feel all those feelings. So what we're trying to do with treatment over time is we're trying to get you to a point of where you have a different set of beliefs. So in, in this situation, we want, you to, we want you to believe, one, your flaws might not be revealed when you enter a situation. Perhaps um, they just don't get triggered you just don't experience it like if you're worried about blushing or your mind going blank maybe those things just won't happen for two maybe the things that you think of as flaws are not actually going to be noticeable so if you get a little shaky maybe people don't notice that um, if you stumble over your words like people people stumble over their words I've probably done it 20 times in this video but it has to get to a certain level for people to even notice it. So maybe it's not noticeable. Anxiety itself is often much more internal of an experience than an external experience. Three, if they do notice these flaws, maybe they don't think of them as flaws. Maybe they think of that as just somewhere in the normal path of, um, of acceptable. Or sometimes maybe they even like these things. So, Maybe, you know, I remember when I was, I was young and I had braces. People didn't think of it as a flaw the way that I did. In fact, some people told me they preferred me with braces. Um, four, maybe they are accepting or kind rather than being judgmental of imperfections. We've all got flaws and we tend to underestimate the empathy of other people. Five, maybe they see you as a whole person. Even if there are flaws or imperfections, maybe they're looking at you as a full person and see those in context. Maybe you're quiet, but maybe you're a good listener. Maybe you're friendly and flawed. Maybe they look at it in, in context. And then six, if you find out that you're not a good fit with someone, you don't socially connect, then maybe that's disappointing and normal. Like maybe it's not a really big deal. Maybe you can cope with that, tolerate it, disappointment passes, and maybe you then focus on meeting other people. So there are all these beliefs here. So if we switch to that second set of beliefs, that's much less anxiety provoking. And if you believe any of those things, it stops that whole system from lighting up. And that's the goal of what we're trying to do in treatment 
is get to the point where you see things that way. And therefore, the social anxiety doesn't kick in. So if you're interested in this, if you find it interesting, I will say that I have a book out now, um, Dating Without Fear, that gets into this in a lot more detail and helps to kind of unwind those beliefs and, and pick those apart so that you can see things in a less anxiety-provoking and healthier and calmer way. It's available in the link below, so please go check it out. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.